Good morning. morning. Welcome to Divine Peace Church. Welcome to those in person. Welcome to those joining us online. Today is the 16th Sunday in the season of Pentecost. This morning's sermon will be based on a reading from Romans chapter 13. The sermon has the theme, Remain in Debt, the Debt of Love to One Another. Service will begin on page 4 with the singing of the opening hymn, Hymn 260, Let All Things Now Living. morning we'll remain seated. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. you. Our Savior Jesus Christ commanded baptism when he said, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. All of us are born into this world with a deep need for baptism. From our parents, we inherit a sinful nature. We are without true fear of God and true faith in God and are condemned to eternal death. But Jesus took away our sin by giving his life on the cross. At our baptisms, he clothes us with the robe of his righteousness and gives us a new life. Our sinful nature need not control us any longer. We recall what baptism means for our daily lives as we speak these words. Baptism means that the sinful nature in us should be drowned by daily sorrow and repentance, and that all its evil deeds and desires be put to death. It also means that a new person should daily arise to live before God in righteousness and purity forever. As baptized children of God, we confess our sins. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us. 
and has given his only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This morning we have a baptism. Got it. William James Wilkie. By the power of the Word, the Holy Spirit has led you to believe that this new life in Christ is yours. Now in holy baptism, the Lord Jesus assures you of your salvation that you may give te public testimony of your faith, I therefore ask you. Do you believe that you were born in sin and therefore eternally lost? Yes. Do you believe in the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit? Yes. Do you believe that this triune God planned and carried out your salvation? Yes. Do you believe that God grants you the forgiveness of sins in holy baptism? Do you desire to be baptized? Yes. Receive then the sign of the cross on the head and on the heart to mark you as a redeemed child of God. William James Wilkie, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. The Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit has forgiven all your sins. By your baptism, you are born again and made a dear child of your Father in heaven. May God now strengthen you to live in your baptismal grace all the days of your life. Peace be with you. I now invite the congregation to please stand. Brothers and sisters in Christ, our Lord commands that we teach his precious truth to all who are baptized. Christian love, therefore, urges all of us, especially parents and sponsors, to assist in whatever manner possible so that Will may remain a child of God until death. If you are willing to carry out this responsibility, then answer, yes, as God gives me strength. Yes, yes as God gives me strength. Merciful Father in heaven, we thank you for the blessing of baptism by which you offer and grant the forgiveness of sins, life, and salvation. Help us to regard our baptisms as the robe of righteousness we are to wear all the days of our lives. Look with special favor on Will and grant him a rich measure of your spirit that he may grow in faith and godly living and make us willing to carry out our responsibilities to those who have been baptized, so that all of us may finally come to the blessed joys of heaven through Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. It's time for prayer. So for all the kids and adults too, it's time to stop, drop your head, and fold your hands for prayer. Let your continual mercy, O Lord, cleanse and defend your church. And because it cannot continue in safety without your help, Protect and govern it always by your goodness. For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. The service will continue at the top of page 9. The psalm for today is Psalm 51, and so we will sing the words of the short song of praise, Create in Me. Create in Me takes the words from Psalm 51, verses 10 through 12, and sets them to music. So we will join to sing.
service will continue with our reading for this morning. Reading is at the top of page 10. It's our second lesson from Romans chapter 13. So again, if you're following along at home, you can turn to Romans chapter 13. And our reading will be taken from verses 1 through 10. Again, this will serve as the sermon text for this morning. Let everyone be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority except that which God has established. The authorities that exist have been established by God. Consequently, whoever rebels against the authority is rebelling against what God has instituted, and those who do so will bring judgment on themselves. For rulers hold no terror for those who do right, but for those who do wrong. Do you want to be free from the From fear of the one in authority, then do what is right, and you will be commended. For the one in authority is God's servant for your good. But if you do wrong, be afraid. For rulers do not bear the sword for no reason. They are God's servants, agents of wrath to bring punishment on the wrongdoer. Therefore, it is necessary to submit to the authorities, not only because of possible punishment, but also as a matter of conscience. This is also why you pay taxes, for the authorities are God's servants who give their full time to governing. Give to everyone what you owe them. If you owe taxes, pay taxes. If revenue, then revenue. If respect, then respect. If honor, then honor. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be are summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. This is the word of the Lord. We'll continue uh, by singing the next hymn there on page 11, hymn 286, The Law Commands and Makes Us Know.
service will continue with the sermon. Again, for those following along online, the sermon will be based off of Romans 13, uh, just verses 8 through 10. For those here in person, you can follow along to those verses in your service folder. And we'll begin with this prayer. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. This is a fire alarm. Took it out of my house because I was tired of it beeping at me all the time. You know, they are so sensitive these days, they can detect all kinds of stuff, and I just grew tired of that constant beeping for no reason. So I took it out. I think I'm going to take the rest of them out because it drives me crazy when they're beeping all the time, especially in the middle of the night for no reason. They go off. And plus, I mean, if you really look at the statistics, my house probably isn't going to burn down. There's probably not going to be a fire in my house. Not. And this isn't even a fire alarm. This is one of those internet extender things. So I would not take the fire alarms out of my house. Fire alarms are good. They protect us. They protect my family. I leave them up and I do change the batteries whenever they beep at me. Even if it's at like 2 in the morning, I change the batteries. We all agree fire alarms are good. We want to have them in our lives. But then there's debt. Debt is not something that we want to have in our lives. We can all agree that fire alarms are good, but debt wears on all of us. Even kids. Even kids fear having debt in their lives. This year, kids are afraid that they may not be able to go trick-or-treating. And that debt of candy owed to them by society may not be paid by their parents. And they are afraid that they won't have enough candy to get them through the year. But it goes beyond that. College students, as you know, fear student loans. Adults continue to fear student loans because they follow you. But adults also fear car loans, mortgages, credit cards. They even fear going into debt just trying to go on a vacation to get away from working at trying to overcome their debt. If you're retired, you worry that you might have to go into debt just to try and survive those last few few years of life. And this fear of debt, it actually extends beyond just the individual level, even our government is afraid that we might go into debt, and so they've spent trillions on stimulus checks because of all the effects of the coronavirus this year to try and keep people from going into debt so society, so our economy can go on. But that drove the national debt to unimaginable levels. As far as I could tell online, it's over $26 trillion. It just boggles the mind. Debt is not good. That's not good because we work to pay the bills that we expect, our normal bills. But then we have to work extra if we actually want to pay down debt. Or we have to limit what we can get just so that we might be able to make some debt payments. That is not good. And the Apostle Paul agrees with us. In our reading from Romans 13, Paul wrote, Let no debt remain outstanding. Pay your debts. Get rid of it. Don't let that be hanging over your head anymore. But then he goes on. Except. Let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. Paul agreed with us that debts need to be paid. But he said there is one debt that you write a blank check to in your life. There's one debt that will never be paid off. It is this debt to love one another. And he goes on to explain that what he means by love is keeping God's commands. But we hear that and we go, really? More commands, more rules, more laws? I'm going to go into further debt now, having to keep up with all of this. Our sinful nature screams, no, I don't want to do that. Paul goes on, he further defines what he means. He says, you shall not commit adultery. But that takes work. 
It's much easier just to live our lives giving into what feels good rather than waiting for something that would be right. Or when times get hard to put effort into a marriage that has gone well beyond the honeymoon phase and it's much easier to just start something new. You shall not murder, which is to say don't hurt or harm anyone either. That's what 1 John 3.15 says. It's not just murder, it's also hating or wishing harm on somebody else. But it takes work to remain patient with others. It's much easier to throw out a criticizing or scathing, sarcastic remark for somebody that has done something in your eyes that is foolish. Somebody that's different. Somebody that is not as good as you are. You shall not steal. Just a little time at work, answering some personal emails, personal texts, personal call. Or hey, if you're working at home and you're on the clock, take a nap. You just get outside of the camera on your computer and who knows? I could steal a little time here and there and that's okay, right? At least it's a lot easier than working hard for 40, 50, maybe even 60 plus hours a week. You shall not covet when the bigger, better truck or car or house or phone or backpack or computer, whatever it is, fills your heart and you want to get that no matter what and it replaces any kind of contentment or thankfulness in your life. And Paul finished his definition of love by writing, and whatever other command there may be, they are all summed up in this one command, love your neighbor as yourself. Keeping that one debt to love others is a struggle. Keeping a blank check open to show love to all people is a struggle because of our sinful nature. We struggle to keep God's commands. We struggle to love others as ourselves. Paul says this is a struggle. He addressed this earlier in Romans chapter 8. He said the sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Our sinful hearts want to sign off on showing love. They want to pay that debt quickly and then move on. Not worrying about showing love to other people, but whatever works for me in my life. But if we go down that path of sin and selfishness, it only leads to death. And ultimately, it leads to condemnation in hell. And sin and death, these are debts that we cannot repay. Our only hope then, our only hope to be paid off, to have that debt of sin paid off is Jesus. In his first letter, Peter wrote, For you know that it was not with perishable things, such as silver or gold, that you were redeemed from the empty way of life handed down to you from your forefathers. But, again, you were redeemed with the precious blood of Christ, a lamb without blemish or defect. You and I are unable to repay this debt of sin, this debt of not showing love, not keeping God's commands. If we were to work at it each day and become a little bit better each day, it might feel like we're maybe conquering this debt. But you still have all of those days in the past that you haven't repaid. It doesn't work. Or if you try to balance it out, well, I did a lot of things that weren't loving yesterday, but if I do a lot of loving things today, that'll just balance out, right? No. You're still left with this pile of hurt that hurt yourself, that hurt others. Your sin is still there. You haven't, you haven't equalized it. But what if I compare myself to others? I must be better than, than a few other people in this world. But instead, we, when we look around, we realize, as Paul wrote in Romans 3, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. We're all in the same boat. We cannot compare ourselves. We are no better than anyone else in God's eyes. And in fact, God never asks us to compare ourselves to one another. 
We are only liable to Him. The only comparison we are to make in our lives is, how do I measure up to God Himself? And God says, be perfect as I am perfect. And we are not. And so God is the only one that can save us. And so Jesus, the Son of God, God Himself, is the one that came to save us from our great debt of sin. And Jesus does this by repaying our debt of sin, by being good in our place. So this broken life of sin and lack of love is made up because Jesus' life was not broken. Jesus' life instead was characterized by love. Never committing adultery, never committing murder, never hating anyone, but instead always helping and showing kindness to others. Never stealing a selfish moment for himself, but constantly working for our good. Sure and certain that he was walking the way to the cross to pay for all of our sins. Not coveting a kingdom that would just be given to him, but that he would earn the right to say, You are mine, because I gave my life for you. That you would be mine forever, that you would have no worry of any debt at all. This is what God calls his grace. Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter 1, In him, in Jesus, we have redemption. We are bought back through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, in accordance with the riches of God's grace that he lavished on us. He lavished his grace on us. He opened the storerooms to this huge room filled with his grace for us. God's grace is his perfect life that Jesus lived, his death and his resurrection given for us. This is what paid our debt. So God, through Jesus, not only brings us to zero by forgiving us for our sins, but our account now is full of God's goodness, of righteousness, perfection, holiness, love. That is what God now sees in all of us when he looks at our account, when he looks at our life. He doesn't see our broken, sinful lives. He instead sees us through Jesus. This is God's love. It is the good news that he does not want anyone to be lost to sin or death or hell, but all have been saved through Jesus. And you and I are called to share this good news of Jesus' payment for our sins. The love of God that saved us is now inside of us to share this love of God with others. God shares this through the prophet Ezekiel in Ezekiel chapter 33. This is God's desire for all people. Say to them, As surely as I live, declares the Sovereign Lord, I take no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but rather that they turn from their ways and live. Turn, turn from your evil ways. Why will you die, people of Israel? God doesn't want any of us to be lost. Instead, God wants all of us to turn from evil and to live. And in the verses just before this in Ezekiel 33, he has given us this great work to do. This work of love for others. To make others conscious of their sins. To let others understand this is why you have brokenness in your life. This is sin and what it leads to is death and what it leads to after that is hell. And you have no way of paying for this, but God has paid that debt of sin for you in full. And so when you see somebody caught in sin, go to them. Expose their sin so that you can expose them to Jesus and his real forgiveness, his real relief from what they are going through in their lives. Do not let that, them remain ignorant of sin and even worse, the condemnation that follows. Now, some of the people that you talk about sin with won't want to hear it. And they'll remain condemned. And then there are others that hear what you have to say about sin. And more than that, 
They get to hear from you what Jesus has done, and they will give thanks to God that somebody came and told them what Jesus has done for them. They'll give thanks to God that it is not dependent on how well I live my life, what steps I need to take, or who I need to go through to try and get to heaven, but that I have direct access to God Almighty, and sins are forgiven, and heaven is open. A place without sin, a place of eternal joy, is ours through Jesus. This is the great message that we have. You and I have an outstanding debt to one another, the debt of love. And Paul finishes writing about this debt of love. He said, love does no harm to a neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfillment of the law. Love is at the heart of God's commands. He created us to love. He created us to follow his commands, again, that do no harm to others. Following God's commands, again, means not murdering, hating, hurting, committing adultery, cheating, stealing, coveting, being lost to greed and jealousy. Living in love, following God's commands, means doing things that are good towards others. So there's a balance now that we live in as people of faith. As people of faith, we balance love and the commands. And this is what happens if that balance gets out of whack. If we lose love and we just live in God's commands, then we start to follow these rigid rules. And we live as prideful police and judges with one another, looking to corner one another and convict one another without any thought to show the Savior just the fact that we get to commit and tell somebody that somebody is a sinner. That's one sign. On the other side would be losing the commands and just living in love. If we just live in love, then really our lives become ruled by emotions and feelings. And we can justify doing just about anything in our lives because it was a loving thing to do. Which again can lead to all kinds of things that are really not good. And so this is the balance that we live in by faith. To live in a loving way towards all people, which means living within God's good law and commands for our lives. In Matthew 18, Jesus gives an example of loving one another within God's commands. And he shows that living in this way is beneficial for this life, but it also extends into the life to come. He said, if your brother or sister sins, go and point out their fault just between the two of you. He starts out this way. Don't, if you know that somebody has sinned, don't make it this public thing. Go to that person. In love, show them their sin, praying, hoping that they'll confess your sin and you get to say, Jesus has forgiven that sin and you can leave it behind and move on. He says, if they listen to you, you have won them over. But if they will not listen, take one or two others along, so that every matter may be established by the testimony of two or three witnesses. Again, at this point, if you've gone one-on-one -on -one and they aren't listening, it's not time to make it public, get somebody else, maybe two other people that, again, care. Be patient and kind and loving with those that are stuck in sin. But he goes on, if they still refuse to listen, tell it to the church. And if they refuse to listen even to the church, treat them as you would a pagan or a tax collector. What he means is treat them as somebody that, from what we can see, they have lost faith because they now love sin. And by putting a separation, we show how serious that is. And that's why Jesus follows with saying, Truly I tell you, whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. As the church, as people who love God and love his commands, we show one another sin, always in the hope that they would see their Savior. That's loosing something. That's opening the kingdom of heaven to them through Jesus. But also when somebody is caught in sin, to be very firm. 
locking them in their sin and saying, if you continue in this, it may destroy your faith. And you know that without faith, what happens? You'd be lost and condemned. So when you and I as believers bring up sin with one another, we show the severe consequences, all in the hope that we can show what Jesus has done, the need for the Savior. When you and I work with one another like that, we become the fire alarms in each other's lives. The little beeps here and there just to remind each other that we can fall into sin. And when there's a big fire, we beep a lot, pointing people back to their Savior, Jesus. That is what it means to live good lives towards one another. This is what it means to remain in debt to one another, to remain in the debt of love. Amen. At this point, for those joining with us online, it's the time to check in by clicking the connection card there on the side pane on uh, Facebook Live. If you'd like to give, the offering plates are on the back table, so we're not passing them around, or you can give online at divinepeace.com slash give. And another, another encouragement to share. Embrace that debt of love and share what Jesus has done with somebody today. Our service then will continue with the Nicene Creed found on page 13. We'll speak this confession of faith responsibly. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became fully human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who in unity with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. <clears throat> Service will continue on page 14 with the prayer of the church. Again, for all the kids and adults too, uh, time for prayer, time to stop, drop your head and fold your hands. Brothers and sisters, let us pray for the Holy Church of God throughout the world, that God the Almighty Father gather and guide it, so that we may worship Him in peace and tranquility. Almighty God, You have shown Your glory to all nations in Jesus Christ. Guide the work of the Church. Help Your chosen people to endure in faith. Share Your Word and bring salvation to people everywhere. Let us pray for our pastors and teachers and all leaders of the church and for all the people of God. Holy Spirit, you guide the church and make it holy. Strengthen and uphold all who serve you and your people. Keep them in health and safety for the good of the church. Help each of us faithfully do the work to which you have called us. Let us pray for those who do not believe in Christ, that the light of the Holy Spirit may show them the way to salvation. Almighty God, 
enable those who do not acknowledge Christ to hear and believe the truth of the gospel. Help us grow in love for you and for one another as witnesses of your love for all people. Let us pray for those who serve in public office, that God may guide their minds and hearts, so that all of us may live in true peace and freedom. Lord, graciously direct those who have been set in positions of authority among us, so that people everywhere may enjoy justice, peace, freedom, and a share in the goodness of your creation. Almighty God, merciful Father, heal the sick, comfort the dying, give safety to travelers, and free those unjustly deprived of liberty. In your mercy, hear the prayers of all who call on you in any trouble, that they may have the joy of receiving your help in their need. Today, we especially pray for Trace Ivy and his family, again, who uh, Trace lost his mother last week. But he rests securely, um, that her sins are forgiven, and she is with her Savior in heaven. We pray for those who are still hospitalized, Daryl Richardson and Kim Baez, those struggling in health, Benj, Sylvia's grandson, continuing in his struggle against seizures, Ashley Lindsay and her recovery from a stroke and infections, young Isaac, Sylvia Payet's daughter Annie knows this family. Young Isaac will be going experimental treatments for his brain tumor. For Terry Deluge continuing to recover at home and Doug Patterson as well. Pray for Devin and Keitha, Lauren and Kately. That God would give health to them and to their uh, young babies. That God would be with them throughout their entire pregnancy. That God would fill mother and baby uh, with faith. And we continue to pray for Jimmy and his wife Anne, friends of the Ivies. We give thanksgiving for the recovery that Jimmy has gone through, and we pray that he would make a full recovery. For those battling cancer, Terry Washick, Laura Schmidt's daughters, and Mauricio Pargas. Today we also pray that Holy Spirit would continue to be with Will, to fill his heart with faith, we give thanks for the cleansing waters of his baptism that unite him with Jesus' death and resurrection. Pray that you would be with all those uh, suffering from the wildfires, those experiencing loss, pain, or troubles. Be with Ron and Laura Schmidt moving into a new apartment. And we pray for good and healthy marriage relationships. And now hear us as we bring you our private prayers. Lord, you repaid the debt of sin with the payment of your perfect life sacrificed on the cross. Keep us living in the debt of love to one another. And now hear us as we join together to pray as you taught us. And we'll again try and speak these words slowly for the sake of the children among us who know it but may not be able to say it as quickly as some of us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now, brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another and serve the Lord with gladness. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Our service will finish with the singing of the closing hymn, hymn 490, Love in Christ is Strong and Living.